Good day, here are the headlines from the Philippine News Agency. We start the newscast on this Tuesday with a country having a new education chief. President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. picked Senator Juan Edgardo Saniangara to head the Department of Education. The Presidential Communications Office made the announcement today. Angara will replace Vice President Sara Duterte, who resigned from the post on June 19. Duterte's resignation will take effect on July 19. The development comes just less than a month before the start of classes for school year 2024 to 2025 on July 29. Angara has since championed educational reforms as a lawmaker. His notable legislative achievements include the universal access to quality tertiary education and the enhanced basic education of 2013 or the K-12. The Philippines and Malaysia underscored the importance of strengthening bilateral relations following the visit of Kuala Lumpur's top diplomat to Manila. In a courtesy call in Malacanang on Monday, President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. and Malaysian Foreign Minister Dato Serio Tamahaji Muhammad bin Haji Hassan discussed bilateral relations between the Philippines and Malaysia and important regional issues. Marcos says the Philippines is looking forward to keeping itself in constant communication with Malaysia on current developments. Diplomatic relations between Malaysia and the Philippines began in 1959 with the establishment of the Philippine legislation in Kuala Lumpur, which became a consulate on May 18, 1964. In July 2023, Marcos made a state visit to Malaysia and met with then Malaysian King His Majesty Al Sultan Abdullah Riyadh. Tudin Al Mustafa Bila Shah. Earlier in March 2023, Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim visited the Philippines where the leaders discussed bilateral cooperation in politics, security, economy, and people to people ties. Malaysia has played a crucial role in establishing peace in Muslim Mindanao. A Vatican official is on a visit to the Philippines to expand bilateral ties. The Department of Foreign Affairs says Vatican Secretary for Relations with the States of the Holy See, Archbishop Paul Richard Gallagher, arrived on Monday and would meet with President Ferdinand R. Marcus Jr. and other church officials during his five-day visit. The DFA says this is the first official visit to the country by a Vatican foreign minister in the 72-year diplomatic relations between the Philippines and the Holy See. Gallagher will also meet with Foreign Affairs Secretary Enrique Manalo to discuss areas of cooperation such as higher education, migration, governance, interfaith, dialogue, and climate change. The DFA says the meeting will serve as an opportunity to underscore the shared commitment of the Philippines and the Holy See to advancing peace, human rights, rule of law, and sustainable development. According to Vatican News, Archbishop Gallagher is set to join in the annual celebration of Pope's Day in honor of the Feast of St. Peter and St. Paul at the Apostolic Nunciature in Manila. He will also speak at the plenary session of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines in Malaybalay, Bukidnon Province. He is scheduled to give a lecture on moral governance and ethical leadership for the Mabini Dialogue Series organized by the Foreign Service Institute of the DFA. The Philippine Coast Guard has recognized some of its personnel who rescued Filipino fishermen whose boat exploded near Bajo de Masinlo. A total of 62 Coast Guard personnel received the Bronze Cross for their response in the incident. Despite the shadowing and initial blocking by China Coast Guard and People's Liberation Army Navy ships, Contrary to earlier reports, the PCG and the Filipino fishermen clarified that it was not the Chinese personnel who rescued them. Instead, the Chinese personnel even blocked the boats that assisted the Filipino victims. The rescued fishermen said they had radioed for help and the Filipino ship came and brought them to the approaching PCG vessel, the BRP Sindangan. 
The incident occurred on June 29 when the engine of their fishing boat Akio exploded 70 nautical miles southwest of Bajo de Masinloc, also known as Scarborough Shoal or Panatag Shoal. Two of the eight Filipino fishermen were injured. PCG spokesperson Rear Admiral Armando Balilo said that CCG and PLA Navy ships attempted to block BRP Sindangan during the towing operation of the half-submerged boat. He said the CCG and the PLA Navy vessel stopped shadowing their ship when they were informed by the Angel of the Sea on board about the humanitarian mission and that the CCG launched two rigid hull inflatable boats and offered to help the eight fishermen of FFB Akio. He noted that the PCG and CCG communicated in a diplomatic manner and set aside issues on sovereignty. The Filipino fishers arrived at Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority Port in Zambales early Monday morning. The Manila Electric Company on Meralco clarifies paying electric bills through its mobile app or online website is free. In an advisory, the power distributor says payments through its online website or app do not have convenience fees as this have been waived by the Bayad e-wallet. Meralco Vice President for Corporate Communications and Spokesperson Josel Dariaga meanwhile said convenience fees charged by other providers go to their payment partners. He stressed that Meralco does not profit from the convenience fees charged by payment apps. Zeldariaga says customers are encouraged to use whatever secure payment channel they prefer. Payments for Meralco bills using e-wallets are charged convenience fees of 6 pesos for GCash, 7 pesos for Maya, and 15 pesos for Visa, MasterCard, and JCB cards. The Civil Service Commission announces it is granting certificates of eligibility or COEs at no cost to fresh graduates and first-time job seekers aiming for government positions. In a news release, CSC Chairperson Carlo Nograles says the agency is offering one original and one authenticated copy of the COE for free to first-time job seekers applying for career service positions. This is based on Republic Act 11261 or the First-Time Job Seekers Assistance Act. This states that government agencies shall no longer collect fees from a first-time job seekers requesting pre-employment documents. First-time applicants who have taken and passed the career service examination, as well as individuals with special civil service eligibilities may avail of the free COE. Applicants may get additional copies of their COE for 100 pesos per original copy and 50 pesos for authenticated copy. Unemployed Filipinos who applied for a COE in the past may still be granted a free certificate. Nograles said the CSC hopes that applicants will be encouraged to apply in career positions and join the 1.9 million public servants nationwide. President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. greeted on social media his mother, former First Lady Imelda Romualdez Marcos, on her 95th birthday today. In his social media account, President Marcos posted a photo collage of him, his mother, and his children through the years, along with a message thanking the former First Lady for teaching him and his grandchildren to be gracious, kind, and compassionate. First Lady Lisa Raneta Marcos also took to social media her greetings for her mother-in-law. In her birthday greetings to her mama, Meldi, the First Lady thanked her for being a second mother. Imelda Marcos was born on July 2, 1929. She served for two decades as First Lady throughout the term of former President Ferdinand E. Marcos Sr. She would later join Congress as a representative of Leyte from 1995 to 1998 and later a representative of Ilocos Norte from 2010 to 2019. The former First Lady was hospitalized in March for mild pneumonia. And that's the latest and the biggest stories on the PNA headlines. 
For more news updates, please visit our website, pna.gov.ph, or our Facebook index account, Philippine News Agency. The PNA Headlines is also streamed via the Servicio Facebook page. You may also watch PNA Headlines through the Philippine News Agency's YouTube account and via the News and Information Bureau website, nib.gov.ph, under PNA News. I am Marita Muahe and this is the PNA Headlines, bringing stories that unite the nation.